All right, it looks like we only have one participant right now. Um, let's just do a quick test. Uh, I think Maria, if you can hear our voice, would you mind posting in the chat? Good morning, Maria. This is Sarah and Zach. Oh yeah, hi. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Just want to make sure you can hear us okay. So just send us a message in the chat if you can hear us. Okay. Great, thanks. <laughs> like we're good. We're also recording this for other students that are interested in meeting the immigration team. So anyone's watching this video later, hello to you as well. Uh, should we go ahead and introduce ourselves, I guess? Yeah, let's get started. Great, okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, actually, before we get into that, let's get into the tech stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, so if this is your first time using Blackboard Collaborate, you might use it a few times if you come here to UT Dallas for your classes, um, other webinars and things like that. If you have any issues with connectivity, try exiting the room and then restarting all of Blackboard Collaborate. That usually helps. Um, you can view recordings of this and any past webinars we have on the link on that slide right there. Remember that uh, you can see and hear us. We cannot see or hear you. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so when we open up for questions, just use that chat option. And feel free to send in chats throughout so that we get your questions and then we'll talk about those throughout and at the end. Okay, well, you're here to meet the immigration team. Zach and I are representing our team of six right now. We have a wonderful group of people that really just love their job. Mm. I think one reason I got into the field is just being able to meet so many people from different backgrounds and to be a little, a little part of their educational journey while they're studying abroad here in the United States. So I really love it. I've been doing it for about nine years, which Whoa, feels like cool. way too long <laughs> to have um, stuck to one career. But I love it, and I, I don't see myself changing anytime soon. It's just a real joy to help students figure out their immigration status and get those documents issued for the visa interview and then come in and start their career and their, um, their educational career, educational journey. What about you, Zach? Why are you in this field? I mostly completely agree, right? I, I think we kind of get the best of both worlds in this position. Working in higher education is always just really inspiring. Mm -hmm. Being around students and researchers who just care about bettering themselves and mm -hmm. learning more. And then at the same time, getting that multicultural aspect, mm -hmm. meeting people with tons of different experiences, sharing experiences, um, it's great, mm -hmm. right? I think there's a particular type of person who uh, works in this advising position. Um, so I think you'll be happy to find that uh, we're very receptive, um, very helpful, very open-minded, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'd say that our, all of the members on our team, Lauren, Mario, Lark, and Samaya, uh, we all work really well together. So mm -hmm. while students don't have like one advisor that they're assigned to, uh, we, we collaborate, we take good notes on every case, and um, anytime you work with any of us, you're, you're going to get quality advice, I'd say. And I think a, like a great point that you just made is the fact that it's an entire team. Mm -hmm. uh, so because you are not assigned one immigration advisor, think of it as you being assigned an entire team, mm -hmm. right? So you have a wealth of um, professionals with different experiences, mm -hmm. different expertises that you can draw from. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so what do we actually do here? Zach, what's our job? I guess we do processing and advising. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the main thing. So um, processing is mostly in terms of your I-20. Mm. So that's the main thing that you'll ask us for help with, especially at the front end, is getting you your I-20. So I don't know where you are in the process right now, but if you're wanting to apply for that I-20, you know, first you need to be admitted to UT Dallas. That mm -hmm. does start from a different office, and that's sometimes a confusion that students have. We don't do the evaluation from the academic side at all. We leave that up to the experts in your program and the admission office, and then once they have reviewed you and, and given you that admission, that's when you would start with us in mm -hmm. getting your I-20. 
when you're admitted, you're going to start through iComet. And that's our that's our portal that you'll engage with us on. That's how you send documents securely. That's how we keep track of your um, at profile, your immigration profile. So you'll submit us your financial affidavit along with documentation to show that you and your sponsors have the financial resources to be successful here. Um, and that's going to cover your tuition and your living expenses plus medical and some other um, unexpected expenses just to make sure that you have that before you arrive. Um, that's also going to be used when you get your visa. So you want to have all those documentation um, in hand for the I-20 and then you'll use that at your visa appointment as well. Of course, um, if you haven't already gotten your, your passport, that's a big first right. step. So apply for that passport, um, you already have one, and <laughs> send us a copy of the biographical page of the passport. That's how we see um, your, your photo, your name, your legal name, according to your documents, and the date of expiration on your passport. Right. Um, and some of you might be applying to many different uh, schools mm -hmm. in the United States. Yeah. Some of those schools, their international office might also do that admissions process. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely make sure you're checking each of the websites of those schools to figure out what is the I-20 process for them. But like Sarah says, you're going to work with in the Office of Admissions and Enrollment to get admitted into UT Dallas, and then you'll use the ISSO to get your I-20. Mm -hmm. That's right. OK, so let's say you've gone ahead, you applied for your I-20, you send all the documents that we need to see, we issue the I-20 and we send it to you by shipping. Um, what's next? Right? Next, you need that actual F-1 visa. So we do offer some guidance in preparing for that F-1 visa interview. Of course, at first, you'll want to pay the I-901 Student Exchange and Visitor Information System, or a CVIS mm -hmm. fee, um, by just following this link right here. There is also a frequently asked questions page if you have any questions about that. And I, I will say, do you use fmjfee.com? There mm -hmm. are a number of scams that are out there for collecting this fee. So uh, make sure this fee is, is going to the Department of State directly through fmjfee.com. And if your country has some difficulty in, um, in paying this fee, that some, certain countries have uh, different restrictions on the way that they can pay online fees, then talk to the consulate where you would be getting your visa interview, and they'll guide you on the steps that you should take to do that. But don't use any third party or um, agency that's telling you that they'll pay that fee for you. Right, right. If, if that ever comes up, you're worried that it's not an official website, always double check with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so next, after you've paid the fee, you're actually going to apply for the F1 student visa. You can apply up to 120 days before your program starts date. Four months, if we're calculating. Four months, right, OK. <laughs> uh, that program start date is going to be indicated on that I-20 that you receive. I would recommend reviewing the instructions on the Department of State website. It's travel.state.gov. Mm -hmm. Very useful website. Uh, also review our page as well. Like I said, we have a small page, um, some guidance, some tips about that visa interview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, it does vary consulate by consulate. So totally. do check in with the particular consulate while you've scheduled your interview to see what requirements they have that might be different from the general requirements from other websites. Sure. Like the oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> here we go. All right, now let's speed ahead and say you've got that F1 visa. Congratulations. It's an exciting moment when you actually have that in hand. Um, how soon can you enter the U.S.? Mm. Well, you really can't come in until 30 days before the program start date. That's when your F1 visa it you know kind of begins for you to enter the U.S. So if you come in too early, you get into trouble. So look at that program start date and calculate 30 days, and that's when you can actually enter the country. Right. So um, the earliest would be the 30 days, but then you know the, the latest is also an important question. And with that, we just want to encourage you to make plans for orientation, make sure that you have time to set up your new place of living and to just you know get settled in before the classes start, but at our earliest 30 days. Right. When you come into the country, make sure you have in hand your passport with the F-1 visa inside, the I-20. You want to bring those the proof of financial documents, the same ones that you've been using this whole time, just to show that you have that financial support. Your proof of admission. Mm. Um, and really, those are the main documents. Are there right. any other things in hand you think that they should carry? 
Um, sometimes we recommend maybe any correspondence you've had with um, the academic advisors, anything that show that relationship that you have with our school. Sure. Yeah. So something important to remember is that while you have a visa that's been issued by the Department of State, that is permission to show up to the port of entry. Right. But permission to actually come into the country is granted by the Customs and Border Protection, that's CBP. So when you go through customs, that's when they actually give you the right to enter. So those documents just help you to support your case. And I would say usually your students you know, don't have trouble <laughs> with that. So don't, don't let that uh, scare you too much. But just know that having good documents and having everything that you're supposed to have in hand um, is going to facilitate that process and help you catch your flight down to Dallas or to, to come on into the community and join us here. Right. And we usually encourage students to maybe make a little timeline, a checklist of things that they need to accomplish as soon as they enter. Mm -hmm. A lot of our students find that they might want that full 30 days. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things you got to take care of here at UT Dallas once you arrive. Um, one, to make sure you're settled, you have a place to live, mm -hmm. but also to remove a bunch of holes that you can roll in classes. Mm -hmm. And you know, get over jet lag a little bit. Uh, sure, <laughs> sure. Have some time to just chill and explore before the classes start. For sure. Right. Okay, so you've arrived, right? Mm -hmm. You're now an F1 student here at UT yeah. Dallas. Uh, we just want to check a few of those forms that you brought with you at the port of entry. Um, this is going to be a requirement from our office. We're going to discuss it again at International Student Orientation, but make sure you know about it now. You no, do not want to find out a semester into your program that this is something you forgot about, mm -hmm. right? Right, and I know that there's a lot that you'll be going through when you mm -hmm. first come in. You're making new friends. You're having to get a new phone number and learn you know, a new system. All the things can be um, really important that you're keeping up with, but this one is definitely on the top of that list, and that's your immigration document verification. Mm. This uses iComet as well. Yes. This is the, the portal that you'll use to interact with our office on a number of issues. And what you'll do is you'll go into iComet and you'll submit copy a copy of the I-20 that's been signed by you, your F-1 visa, and your I-94. Mm -hmm. These are some of your primary immigration documents that does show that you have legal status in the U.S. and that you know everything is correct. Correct. And um, you'll also need to give us your U.S. address at this point, yes, so keep yes. that in mind too. We go through every document and we make sure that it actually is accurate. We check the names because sometimes names get a little complicated mm -hmm. on these various documents. Um, and then what we do with that is we actually register you in CBIS. So you have the I-20 that gives you permission to get your visa and to come and study, but we have to activate the I-20 once you're here to say, yep, you know, we, we've got this student <laughs> um, taking classes at UT Dallas. And so that is a really important step. Otherwise, you know, you, you would be doing all of this for nothing. So right, right. Make sure you get that in. So the I-20 and the visa, you probably already have taken care of, mm -hmm. right? To get that I-94, I kind of just recommend Googling I-94. Sure. <laughs> um, I believe the website's maybe even like I-94.gov or something like that, um, right? It's cbp.gov slash I-94. Slash I-94, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but you'll just, um, you can do that piece after you've entered the country. Right. So you can't, if you're um, all, you know, still at home and getting all this together, you don't have an I-94 yet. That happens after you come through the port of entry. Right. And um, actually learned recently that the I-94 is available within minutes of wow. clearing okay. CBP. So they actually want you to, um, after you go through customs to pull it up and make sure that it's correct. Okay. So m you might add that to your travel itinerary as your <laughs> plans. <laughs> cool. All right. So I briefly mentioned this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have a few holds on your student record. These are UT Dallas holds. They're going to keep you from enrolling. Mm -hmm. The role, or sorry, the hold that you will have from the ISSO is for international student orientation. When I say hold, it makes it sound a little bit negative. It does. I was right? about to say, this is the fun part, and then you're like, it's a hold. Right, but orientation is actually very great. It's like, a wonderful opportunity for you to connect to the school, learn yeah. from learn from us and your faculty and a lot of just wonderful professionals that are here to help you and will be an important part of your academic career. Totally. But also really to connect to your peers and make friends and to meet upperclassmen that will be guiding you through a lot of things. So it's a, it's a great um, couple days. It's mm. done conference style 
Um, so the, the first day has some mandatory sessions, but then the second day you kind of build your own schedule and choose the type of um, things that you're interested in learning and, and diving into those topics that are important to you. So it's a great time. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> you'll enjoy it, but it's also required, so you have to okay. do it. Um, so once you complete orientation, that's when you would have the opportunity to register for class. So if you're not um, you're not attending orientation, let's say um, you want to do everything on the front end and get really proactive, come to this December 18th orientation mm. so that we can get you settled before the campus closes because we, right. we, we will close for winter break. Right. Um, otherwise, you can join us on January 8th, and then that's still about a week yeah. um, of time to register for classes and get prepared for that first day on January 13th. For future admins, fall 2020, maybe even summer 2020, I do not believe we have posted those orientation dates. I haven't seen them. Right, so just maybe pay attention to your UT Dallas email. Uh, like Sarah said, orientation is a very fun time. It's a very exciting time. It might be the first time that you meet our team, yeah. right, an ISSO advisor. You'll also meet um, members of the intercultural programs team. Mm -hmm. They're actually running this international student orientation. That's right. So also, I'm guessing you're gonna have a lot of questions when you come in. It is a great time to ask a bunch of questions. A lot of questions. And like we said, there are professionals, um, not just from the international side, mm. but you'll hear from um, the counseling center and the police department and you right. know, they're, they're just uh, the career center. There, there's a ton of uh, wonderful folks that are here to welcome you and to help you connect and answer questions that you have. Great. Oh. Okay, so getting to UT Dallas, um, we have this great travel guide that's an excellent resource for you. So take note of that or just Google it from our website yeah. um, later if you want. But we, we want to make sure that you kind of know what to do once you get here. As Zach said, you, you're gonna have a checklist and you're gonna, um, accomplish those things one by one. And um, like we said, within those 30 days, that's when you can start working on these things. And once you're in the US, um, we've talked about holds, we've talked about orientation. Mm -hmm. um, other things that you need to do is a TB test. Correct. Okay, so that's screening for tuberculosis. And really that's just to make sure that everyone's healthy and ready to, um, to attend school. And um, that can be done here on campus. Yes. So, you know, that's something that's done in-house and um, will be a hold on your account. Again, you can't register until that's done. Um, your, your housing, we wanna give you access to apartments on campus or um, close to campus so that you can make those arrangements. Uh, if you're living on campus, then the residential life can support you with that. Mm -hmm. If you're going to live off campus, um, that's something that you would need to set up yourself. But we have that guide that's going to give you some options and hopefully you connect with some upperclassmen that can give you some insight into where to live around town. Um, this is referring to airport transportation, and we do have... Um, options for uh, requesting someone to meet you at the airport and, and bring you onto campus. Mm -hmm. But I also want to um, mention the transportation around UT Dallas, Dallas and, mm -hmm. and, and Dallas itself, because um, while we, I'd say we're maybe not as um, transportation and pedestrian friendly as, as some cities, especially abroad, right. we, we do have a, a pretty reliable bus system and mm -hmm. um, um, we call it a metro system, the DART. Right, the DART. Um, that's a um, high speed, you know, just a mm -hmm. <laughs> faster form of, of, of transportation. And around campus, uh, there is a free bus that comes and can, that takes students from the local um, apartments to campus. So as you're looking for places to live that are around town, if you're not going to drive right away, then just also check the bus route to see how, <laughs> how uh, quickly you would get to campus. Right. Um, that DART train runs mm -hmm. straight from the airport into the city, and then you can take a bus from the DART train um, station to UT Dallas. I'm guessing you're not going to come straight to the school upon arriving into the country. <laughs> um, about the housing and transportation, I would also recommend maybe trying to connect with some of, some of the student cultural organizations mm -hmm. on campus. They have a lot of programs in place and volunteers in place who will help new students who are arriving um, kind of settle in and make recommendations. 
That's right. Yeah, uh -huh. I think we have a really great community, and we have so many totally. students, and they um, are often really wanting to support each other. Right. Mm -hmm. So we we have those student groups that you can connect to, um, whether with your particular culture or just uh, international student in general, or just UT Dallas student groups. So there are a lot of different opportunities to connect. Um, meet upperclassmen or local students, and even um, local community members also get involved in different ways. So right. it's a it's a great way to to connect and to ask some of those questions that are more about more about life and right, setting right. up your um, your home and things like that. So I think getting connected is a great uh, always a great recommendation. Totally. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. so we've covered most of what we plan to talk about, so we would love to hear more um, from you. If you have questions, please let us know. So th is, this is our slide for asking questions, right? Yes, right. yes. So if you have any questions, go ahead and just type them into the chat, um, and we'll help you out, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the um, two big groups that help with international students at this point are International Student Services, which is like Zach and I and our team, and then intercultural programs. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be hard to know like who to ask what kind of question to. Right. So this slide is, is helpful because it does give kind of a rundown on what we do versus what they do. So um, take note of those email addresses. If you end up asking the wrong person <laughs> the question, we'll connect you. You know, don't worry too much about that. But um, just so you know, we're more on the immigration side yes. and they're on the student life and programming orientation aspect. Okay, Maria, so you're asking if we are going to share the slides with you. Absolutely. I believe they're already available for you to download through the Blackboard. Yeah, so try and see if you can download them through Blackboard. If you cannot, after this presentation finishes, we're going to post it on our website. So at the very least, you could watch the video and just scroll through and look at each slide. Mm -hmm. But you should have access to it. For yeah. Sure. And most of the information on these slides is on our website. Mm -hmm. In uh, different ways. The website's very thorough. Yes. So spend an afternoon just clicking through, reading all that information. It's good stuff. I think unlike most websites, it's kind of surprising, actually. The search bar on the UT Dallas website is great. It really is. Yeah. Honestly, when I'm not sure about something, I'll totally. search it on our website, too. So it's a good resource. Do you have other questions? OK. All right, thank you. We are glad we had at least one participant right. for this webinar. <laughs> and yeah, it was nice to meet you as well. Hope to see you. Um, I don't know if you're coming in this December or January or if you're just interested in a future semester, but hopefully we'll see you at an orientation coming up. Totally. Well, Zach, should we start issuing I-20s? I guess we should, huh? Get, get back to work. All right, let's do it. See y'all later. So actually, let's see. Oh, this is where you can find the recordings. Okay. Right. If you think of more <laughs> questions, um, go to the contact page of our website. You can find our email addresses there. There's also an appointment section of our website. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to have a conversation with one of the advisors here, um, talk about this process over the phone, you can schedule a phone appointment as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's open for prospective students as well. So make that appointment and we'll be happy to help you with those questions. Great. Well, thanks for coming today. Um, if you have more questions, reach out to us. Hope to see you in the future. All right. Bye. Bye.